Hello, I'm Lauren. Welcome to Improving the World. I'm an international improviser based in Hong Kong, and I speak with amazing women of improv all over the world. Today, I talk to Lindsay Haley, an LA-based improviser who, for this one, y'all took me on a ride. Strap on your spacesuit because we're gonna go up. We're gonna come back to grounding and how this relates to your improv moments on a stage, but we're gonna talk outside of the improv four walls for this one and get into concepts about meditation and yoga and finding an ease and a flow and how that then comes back to your improv and makes you a better and more rounded improviser. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? <laughs> Hello. I can't even... <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. It's calm out today. It's quite nice and calming and meditative. So <laughs> Lindsay Haley, you are one of those LA people who has like 15 fingers in pies, which is nigh on impossible with the digits you are given, but you are the founder of Let Love Run, which is an improv consciousness school. So we're going to get into this. And therefore you have this presence practice, which you have crafted. But also, of course, because it's LA, you are an improviser and writer and director and an actor, and you have a production company called Shoes Before Pants, which I thoroughly enjoy. You, my friend, spent a lovely two years in the fine and fantastic Magic Mike Review, which was in Las Vegas. Yes? This is true. Tell me first and foremost about this, we shall not call it a strip show, but a dance review with minimal clothing. It was the ride of my life, pun intended. I was the MC of the show, but with 13 beautiful, and I mean beautiful, ripped, shredded male dancers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so they're like, please, you know, anytime I get interviewed, did you sleep with any of them? And the answer to that is unfortunately no. So I'm just going to go for that right there. That's not um, what I would have asked you. <laughs> I would have wanted to know if you washed any clothing on their stomachs. That would be my first query. That did happen. Okay, that sure. did happen. Yeah. We had to wash our clothes after every show because they were so sweaty from being so hot. Yeah. In 2017, I was here meditating a bunch. And do we ever really? But in my mind, I had released this attachment to making it in comedy per se and was pursuing a more conscious sort of existence. And of course, when you feel like you don't any longer need a thing is the moment that it comes in. So I'm basically meditating four hours a day and all of a sudden get this opportunity or offer from Sharna Halpern. Mm -hmm. I had sent her a feature I was writing for her review. I believe that if that screenplay hadn't hit her inbox at the exact same moment that this audition notice had come in, mm -hmm. that I would have never heard about it. I imagine it went something like this. Here's the email, Sharna. Can you please read this screenplay for me? And she was like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. And then her email was, Channing Tatum is looking to cast this thing. Mm -hmm. She maybe read my script, maybe not, but she at least passed me the other email. It was a fascinating breakdown. And they do say there's a part you're born to play. And mm -hmm. I remember reading the casting notice going, you better be sure that you're willing to move to Las Vegas to do this if you're going to audition because I believe you will get the job. I had this sort of knowingness inside because it was calling for very disparate parts of myself that have never come into communion with each other, much mm -hmm. less inside of a role. So it was a woman relatively spiritual who can kind of coach women into their femininity, a Sherpa of sexuality. And I had just sort of spent some years studying sexuality, also writer, improviser, hosting experience. And so I was just sort of reading this being like, this sounds like my dream job. So pretty tedious audition process. And from just a national broad call out was cast as the OG MC of the first live Magic Mike review in Las Vegas. It's since expanded. I wrote the show with Channing and started it for two years and then retired from the 10 show week slug and came back to Los Angeles. <laughs> so sexual sharpness aside now. I'm not self-proclaimed as that. That is what the casting notice said, but. Uh, well, to me now, you will always be the sexual Sherpa and I would like you to know this. Yeah. <laughs> With that kind of a show, 
a lot of eyeballs are on this feminine and masculine. I don't know what everyone thinks out there. I'd love you to kind of walk us through this, but we all within us have the feminine and masculine energy, and it's about what comes to the fore, what you tap into, and so on. And furthermore, how that manifests and comes into your improv or your performing. Wow, I just love you. I'll start there. Uh, I'm with you 110%. You know, using those terms in some ways feels limiting unless you really do understand the intention behind that, just like a good improv scene. We do still have separate genders on this planet, so it is something to be observed and to make peace with versus mm -hmm. acting like masculine and feminine energies don't exist. And just mm -hmm. as you said, we're all basically half and half chromosomally. I mean, it's very, very close. You know? <laughs> what that really means is not to define any person as a woman or a man, but more how to work with what is archetypally a feminine versus a masculine energy unto the self mm -hmm. and how those can really work together in harmony to give you the results you want in your life, peak performance, if you will. Mm -hmm. So as I understand it and have studied to some extent feminine energy, is the great void. It's the womb space, if you will, where everything is birthed. So the creation energy, life force, magnetism, intuition, those are feminine traits. Being able to roll with things, go with the flow, this is a feminine energy. And a masculine energy is defined as electric, take it to the streets, be in action, thought processes, structural. So when you're really in concert with your own masculine and feminine, understand how to work with that, usually the feminine leads, which is sort of maybe where society is catching up right now with this beautiful virus. We can talk about that in another entire show. <laughs> The idea that everything is birthed through the feminine. So you have to acknowledge that process. Men and women alike come through. You want to use those receptive energies, those feminine energies to receive guidance. And then you use your own masculine energies to take it to the streets. But if you try to do it the other way around, time has proven even now that more patriarchally dominated constructions tend to not have the foundation they need of truth and heart underneath them. And I believe that's sort of what we're seeing right now. So I don't know if that answered anything. <laughs> I think it helped lay down some really good knowledge foundation. Let's talk about, so there's someone watching this video who's like, a what? Thank you kindly for staying to this point in time, a what person. If you're an improviser, how does this work for you? How can one think about in a very literal and performance way, the idea of these energies? Are we talking about how it comes out as a character? Are we talking about how I act on stage, the way that I interact with others? What does it mean in a more literal sense for people in terms of improv and how they perform? Absolutely, and thank you for guiding me to that. <laughs> um, I can stay up there for days. Translation, please. To me, presence, I don't wanna quantify it as a feminine energy. But I will say that to truly just be riding those waves of energy as it relates to improv, be willing to receive and respond, not just reacting from the mental body. In the context of an improv scene, if you're present and in your feminine, receiving, breathing, and responding, mm -hmm. you're going to be steps ahead of the audience because you're not going to get to just the action plan that anyone would go to. You're going to see the plan plan and then you can use the masculine energy even inside of an improv scene what object work do i want to do what's the choice there to support the energy that i'm feeling as it relates again to just good scene fundamentals i feel like oftentimes we see false constructions that perhaps come from a more masculine energy where it's like let me build the perfect circumstance or scenario it doesn't necessarily hold as much weight as if you're just present or in character receiving using the feminine and then implementing your action steps i also believe it definitely relates to character obviously you intentionally choose a very feminine character to hold you in that moment i feel like that's how i play now and it isn't how i always like, mm -hmm. i was very masculine dominant for the i would say the <laughs> first 34 years of my life <laughs> yeah. so i'm hearing you talk about it being more about a presence state versus what you're projecting necessarily in terms of character and the improv even adopting a female character 
does not necessarily mean that you are using feminine characteristics in your improv because if you are being a feminine character you could still be using your masculine energy to be driving how you are interacting in the scene and how you're pushing story or as you say trying to construct so it's a little bit more about the way that you are being and interacting with others versus the characteristic that you share yeah i bow before you humbly i feel like that's exactly what i was trying to say but you did say it better so you did you led me there (laughs) So if we are really working on presence and the overarching goal I'm hearing is about being present and therefore in that presence, you can tap into what you need to tap into. What does one, in your opinion, need to do outside of the improv stage to be able to create this really present person in improv? You have a background in yoga and meditation. Are these things for you that lend to you then being a more present improviser? Absolutely for me, and I will say again, huge disclaimer, I think everyone's their own best guru. My masculine energy was very dominant in my life, my mental process, and it wasn't always acknowledging the intuition I was receiving from my feminine. I would just snap into action a lot before really integrating my own plan. In the spiritual community, if you will, there's a saying, as within, so without as above, so below. So I feel like that little microcosm was true for me in my scene work. It was true for me in my business life. It was true for me in my relationships that that masculine energy for me was dominant. I had my sights set on Saturday Night Live, like a lot of people that came to Chicago. And I actually didn't even know that when I arrived there. I was very pure when I first showed up, just taking the classes and wanting to sort of soak in like a sponge. And I kind of went through the process relatively quickly. And I just sort of climbed the ranks after about two or three years in the improv community. We're talking about Um, Second City that you were doing? Yes, and Improv Olympic in Chicago. And Mm -hmm. those are the fielding communities for Saturday Night Live. And Mm -hmm. was by Sharna Halpern granted an opportunity to audition for SNL based on a one woman show that I had put up. I hadn't necessarily paid my dues as hard as some other people perhaps in the community based on perception. All of a sudden I'm flown out to SNL. I don't get it from that audition. I come back to Chicago and that's when this sort of masculine thing took over in me where it was like, well, that's what I want. Tunnel vision, now I'm gonna crank and work and work and work. Mm -hmm. And just like I described before, of course that didn't happen because I wasn't listening anymore. I was just going my masculine. And so honestly, the heartbreak from that, going at something for six years without really listening to myself and not getting it was one of the reasons I turned to meditation and energetic work to feel better after breakups and missed job attempts. I knew I was in the right field. I wanted to be creative. I was working actually with a Reiki master on the side being like, just do anything, just take this pain away. (laughs) She introduced me to a chant. It was a Kundalini chant. It's called the Miracle Mantra. And I chanted it with her for 20 minutes in her apartment. And I had a wild energetic experience and I was hooked. Energy doesn't lie. It was very experiential for me. So I felt this heat and was chanting and had this experience. And then it's like, whoa, lady, what was that? How do I do that more? Because I just felt so peaceful. There's a place called Sat Nam Yoga in Chicago and there's one Kundalini studio. So it's a very specific modality that uses chanting and breath work and all of these different things. And so I went there. Improv was something that got me to a certain level of presence and consciousness. Then Kundalini kind of took me to the hoop. And then I sort of bridged the two of them. Kundalini and some of the energy work was helping me better negotiate the energies that I was having to confront in scenes or at these theaters and these different communities, learning how to actually protect myself energetically Mm -hmm. instead of open to anything and everything that's flying at me. Yes, for me, yoga, meditation, improv have all become modalities for me to expand my consciousness. And you started this by caveating and saying, it's whatever floats your boat. For you, these were the things. Oh, boat reference, lake, nailing it. So, (laughs) yes, high five myself. I just realized that a clap is really a self high five. Are we congratulating others or ourselves with a clap? I need to think on that. All of it, right? All of it at once, why not? Yo. (laughs) These were the things that centered you and helped you really attain a balance for you in your life 
And that within that, while you were being elevated, your improv was being elevated because when we're on an improv stage, we're being in many ways sort of very raw and hopefully authentic. I know that you teach. It has been very much rooted in fundamentals, yes and, and make each other look good. You hear something that's your instinct, go, 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 which maybe speaks to this idea of a more masculine energy. What do you think is the shift and evolution of improv teaching the new way? Just loving these questions. I feel like it's exactly what we spoke about. The masculine energy is going to flip. We're going to start to learn how to lead with the feminine and then let all those rules and guidelines that we've learned, those are purposeful. I love masculine energy and I want to honor it and work with it. It's not like I'm saying this is going to become a matriarchal society in the world and in improv, only feminine energy forever. I feel like it's just really working with the natural state of energetic flow and listening. It starts from the place of presence with the feminine energy as the foundation. And then later, as you move up the levels, inherently you're taking off all the boxes. If you start with presence and the feminine flow, all of these guidelines, like no questions, know your partner for six months or more, have a deep relationship, yes and. A lot of those things happen very organically from the state of presence. I have personally felt like that's the flip that needs to happen. I believe the generation's behind me, you know, the younger generations are coming into this world with an elevated state of consciousness. We're going to need to augment our structures in order to support a more expanded energy in some of the students that come through. And if we skip that step and keep trying to do things the old way, leading with the mental body, it's going to be the water that breaks the rock. It's going to crack that system. And you're talking about presence practice, which is your copyright stamp here. (laughs) This is something that you've been crafting and working on. Is it like for people who've done other improv courses? Is it like doing, you know, improv one-on-one and then da-da-da, this kind of thing? Thank you so much. You're so great at everything. Yes, they do. tell my partner that? Could you? Yeah, I will. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. So I founded a school called Let Love Run. It's a consciousness in improv school. uses improv as its sort of main consciousness teaching And again, inherently, I believe that if you start with presence, you're going to end up being really, really funny. So the advanced levels, if you stick with it, level five is where you would actually learn these different rules and how to let them naturally be happening or enhance them inside of your play. But presence practice is our level one curriculum. So Mm -hmm. you start off with the feminine. Everyone has to go through level one one before they advance and that that is the foundation is a foundation of presence that would eventually lead you to some more mental body incorporation in your play adding on those rules and shaping things but it definitely starts from that more energetic flow state and presence practice in general was me merging kundalini yogic breathing techniques and some aspects of kriyas inside of my kundalini practice so i get you into a state of just real openness and energetic flow before you would start to try to be present. Essentially asking the mental body to just take a beat, take a step outside for a little while and just really be in the flow of this stuff and see what happens. So I have never done improv and I've never meditated. Is this the place for me or should I have a little bit of a background in one or tether or maybe some yoga, like just a down dog, simple like awareness or not required? Honestly, not required. It's almost preferred. If you come in without any expectation, you're genuinely open to just having this absolutely blow your heart open. I've had that experience on multiple occasions now where people are like, I've never meditated. I've never done yoga. I've never done improv. And I didn't realize that I had actually been meditating and doing improv in yoga my entire life then based on this practice. You Mm -hmm. know, when I'm in states of flow or joy, I am actually already doing all of these things. And so I feel like in some ways, when there's less expectation, there's more potential for wowing. (laughs) So down dog virgins, welcome here. Don't even touch your toes. Don't think about it. Come in and try. Got it. Okay. Just come in and walk. (laughs) Unzipper your soul and walk through the door. The idea here being that we're attempting to quell the ego in which doing so zippered soul undone you are achieving better improv. So at the end of the day, we're still talking about improv, being authentic on stage, but within that context, achieving really great, solid quality performance. We're doing that through applying other practices. Absolutely. There are actual tactical steps 
to getting you into a flow state. Different yogas and meditations will talk about this or there's constructed meditations where the goal is to get you into a meditative state. Mm. But what I love so much about improv and why I feel like it's so helpful and so powerful at this exact moment mm. is that a lot of spiritual journeys, if you will, are internal. You're sitting alone on a yoga mat going in and cultivating your high consciousness. Well, great. No offense. That's kind of easy to do when you're by yourself, not in an environment where all the sands are shifting and people have different energies and all this stuff. So improv to me is one of the first group meditative modalities to come forward. It's needed and necessary right now mm -hmm. at this point in time. I want to also maybe ground this in potentially more tangible experience for people. So what I'm really hearing is when you are doing improv, let's say as a group to relate to your class state that you're talking about, you're doing improv as a group and you truly are in it together and you lose track of time and you look back at that show and you go, man, that one was killer. You heard each other. You did really great listening. The stories just evolved naturally. That in and of itself to me is where maybe the egos are checked at the door and you were in almost this meditative state because I think we speak about meditation as this concept where I am, like you said, on a yoga mat going, oh, and I think that that is a dumbing down of the concept of meditation. Meditation is anything from a hypnotic state to being really focused in. And it's about managing the frequencies to be kind of in a flow place, right? So that could be about cooking in your kitchen and just having a really great time and zoning out with music. And you could be meditative in that way. You could be doing it in an improv show. Being able to tap into that calmness of oneself and then within the context of others to then lift and shift it into an improv show where there's a bunch of crazy stuff happening. People are yelling stuff and there's maybe bar noise and someone drops a glass and all kinds of stuff. I perform in quality locations. <laughs> Me and you both. <laughs> it feels very relatable. I understand what you're saying. Really pulling it down and cementing it in this live experience. Having that reference point of Zen group experience to be able to pull that and calm oneself to be more even in your flow state in an improv rituals, if you want to call it that, how do you actually get into that state? Is an improv warm up like zip, zap, zap, or staring into each other's eyes and breathing for a few minutes before you go on the stage and really remembering what presence feels like before you attempt to do it in front of a group of people? To me, the greatest leap of faith is when you do shed that ego and you're willing to just go out there like this, being like, I genuinely have zero idea what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to breathe and look into my scene partner's eyes and just attempt to hold on and say whatever is authentic in my experience in this now moment. That is time-tested, mother-approved. Anytime I'm watching improv, that's what's happening when they're getting belly laughs from their audience. If you can cultivate that sort of group dynamic and a willingness among everyone involved, your troop, be willing to go for it that way. I believe improv is going to reach a whole yeah. new level. Well, okay. We started with Magic Mike. <clears throat> and, and we've come here. Uh, how did we do that? That was kind of amazing. Let's do a little pan right, pan left here. So we were saying at the beginning that you were having some personal challenges and struggles with the fact that your trajectory in the improv or comedy world was not exactly what you had deemed or intended at that point in time. And so you kind of took a little journey. And I want to know if you reach back to that previous self of that ch -ch or whatever, if that self comes to the fore now. And I want to also talk about this idea of the absurd. We're being a, a little fruitful sometimes in what we're saying here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that a lot. <laughs> For people out there who are just goofy and silly and they just want to be totally bananas, do you reference that kind of absurdist and goofy side? And how does that come up, especially when we're talking about all this other stuff? This esoteric, very mystical stuff. <laughs> I feel like from that state, when you're really there, joy is actually a higher frequency than love. In a laughing fit, it's actually got scientifically, the hertz, if you will, are higher on the scale. All of this waxing poetic analysis, being esoteric, I believe it's helpful and it's been helpful to me, but I know that I'm my most palpable, relatable, magnetic when I'm just doing what I want to do in a moment and being completely silly. And for me, that journey has looked like, man, did I have to go to some deep divey, weird womb circles in Ojai 
to come full circle to like, you know what, Lindsay, chill out and just have fun. Hopefully they have bridged inside of me to some extent because I'm having so much more fun in mm -hmm. my own life now just writing silly songs again than meditating as much as I was at one point. A lot of those things have now become meditation for me personally. I hope there's some full circle moment happening in me where I'm ready to go back out there and just be instead of thinking about how to be. So for you, it took like a sage cleansing to be like, silliness is allowed, please be silly. Yes, and to hopefully relate it back, I feel like it's giving my female, my feminine energy permission to be silly now. Who knows really, but maybe this big deep dive for me spiritually was that same reorientation that I hope I'm offering inside of presence practice inside of myself. And now that feminine wants to be absurd and come through. Before the masculine had no problem doing that. And I would like to see what that looks like in my own art. It's peeking out again. I've had in a way some time off because when you're in a very scripted review in Vegas for two years, you know, I was pretty set in that show. And now I'm coming back into my own creations and what that means it looks like hopefully with this integration of this yeah. understanding. Well, I think that that took us to a nice place near where we started and yet adjacent and somehow at a higher plane. So <laughs> let me ask you, if you have words of wisdom, tell us them now. If you could speak to the younger version of you or the improv community, your peers, or someone who has never done either a toe touch before or improv and is curious about one tether or both, what are your words of wisdom? The adage from I.O., everyone is an artist, a genius, and a poet, I feel that integrated in me later. And what I would tell anyone is to really grok that, not just have it be a concept outside of you, but if I get the privilege or opportunity to be in an improv class among the next Albert Einstein or the next Nikola Tesla or whomever it is, but we're just riffing back and forth and we're on an improv stage together, how am I going to listen differently if I really embody that? knowingness, if I really believe that each of these people are an artist, a genius, and a poet, how much differently am I going to listen and honor and hang on every single word and then build what they're building with them? My ego is still and was very, very large. So I feel like that's part of why I've had the trajectory I've had. And I do believe that that collaborative spirit and really knowing that 10 hearts and 10 minds together are better than one, that you mm. can't possibly see the truth of what you're going to build when you really release into that flow state with the group. You can come in with your ideas, but if you're really surrendered to it, what you will build is so much more profound than what you could have built on your own. I don't believe that younger Lindsay really bought into that in her improv career. I would also go back and tell her that the waves in the ocean are always going to continue that you're going to crest a wave and you're going to dip and then you're going to crest again and dip and pull back to the macro and trust that that process will remain. So no matter what feels like a high and what feels like a dip, you're going to have another high and you're going to have another dip mm -hmm. and is just the natural flow of the universe. My dad always said it to me and I don't feel like I really understood it until now, but don't let the highs get too high or the lows get too low. Thank so. you for that. The improviser in me went to 15,000 different places, ocean <laughs> references, surfers, shark references, all kinds of stuff, but I was managing my presence and really trying to be here because <laughs> improviser in me, I like what you said a lot. Thank you so very much for that. Thank you. Honestly, this was so wonderful to connect with another lady doing the work. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Lindsay, if people want to find you and get a hold of you, so they're going to be in LA and they want to try presence practice, maybe you want to know which different movies and productions and things you've been behind and help support you there, or just find you, buy you, I mean, it's LA, so probably a wheatgrass shot and just right? generally <laughs> throw money at you. It's in its infancy. We've got a nice little Instagram at let underscore love underscore run. So it looks sort of like a heartbeat as you go. And at balls to be feminine, the brand inside of it. And then at Lindsay Haley, my name is spelled quite weird. It's L-Y-N-D-S-A-Y-H-A-I-L-E-Y. -E Instagram is probably the spot for me. And then all of these have websites as well that you can find there. Lindsay, again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. This is Improving the World. And there's more where that came from. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you.
So, did you love the video? If you did, please say kind and wonderful things in the comments down below. And if you're feeling sassy, you could subscribe and look for more from Proving the World. Thanks.